Okay, this is the Iceland volcano. As you can see in the lower image, which I'm now going to zoom on it, you can see the clay pan, which was there and it looked beige color, is now disappeared and covered by the uh, yeah by the lava. The lava is oxidizing very quick. Look, uh, the color of it is changed to kind of brownish color. And uh, what I can say also is that uh, this is a glacial valley. Of course, you can see it's U-shaped. Uh, and this was, uh, f there was some drop stones, glacial drop stones, larger stones that were dropped from the surface of the ice, top of the ice, which was on top of these hills you can see here and even above that and uh, when the ice melted they gradually uh, as ice melted came down and you know that when the stones they get uh, hot quicker than the ice they absorb the sun's rays quicker and it made a hole and eventually fell and touched the ground it was there since the last glacial age and now it has gone it's disappeared under the lava you don't see you can see the tourists standing there And uh, who knows in the future when there is a uh, erosion, million of millions of years from now, when there is enough erosion, uh, who knows how many kilometers of the sediments will be on top of this? It may resurface again, like the way that we have found meteorites and drop stones in the some rock formations in Sweden, in America, in Vietnam, in China, many other places. We find interesting bits in the lava trapped in the lava and a meteorite also has been found in such a setting a drop of stone a time capsule from our time is now trapped in the basaltic lava of the iceland the latest volcano there as you can see the eruption This is starting, it seems. Yeah, the eruption is starting. This lava is very hot, is silica poor. So silica is like a polymer. In that case, it acts like that makes lava sticky. In this case, it's not having enough silica. And at the same time, it has lots of water content. You can see the steam. Uh, the gas visible, you see there, mostly is a uh, water vapor. Volcanologists know what I'm talking about. Uh, please don't criticize if you don't know what about igneous geology. Uh, anyway, uh, there are many resources you can study online. I'm not being uh, you know snobbish or anything. Just uh, just understand what what's going on. I'm I'm trying to you know all of us to understand what's going on here. And uh, yeah, look at the lava is flowing now. It's a bit less runny than the last time. Oh, look, it's over a spill. Over a spilled over the wall of the crater and the uh, uh, channel. It cannot take this. The channel, the lava channel, the lava tubes cannot take all of that. Look at that. Uh, I've seen a video actually that. Uh, in the when the eruption began in i think february march it was uh 400 meters high the eruption sometimes so we can say this volcano can actually grow as far as 400 meters and yet being able to you know spew some lava into the air it has now become stronger and bigger so we will have a long time to observe this uh, volcano it may destroy its walls it may do all kind of things but i don't think that will stop uh, it will go for decades the source of it is in the mantle deep mantle as we know the, how the water ends up by the way in the in the lava okay those who, are, who have a knowledge of the modern igneous geology they will know that uh, when you have subduction, and we had in the 
two sides of the Atlantic subduction, the evidence for it in this form of volcanoes and mountains. Uh, when you have subduction, the accretion of which is wet practically, it has a lot of fluids in it. And also minerals that uh, have water in their chemical co composition, like biotite maker. They survive the subduction into lower mantle, almost touching the core of the earth. Then there was surface, resurface, it's funny just to imagine that when the slabs of the continental crust sink into the subduction zone and they come down and touching the uh, core, the solid outer core, uh, sorry, liquid core, outer core, uh, they bounce back sometimes as hot spots. This hot spot you see there over the Iceland is practically one of the examples of that. They have in the chemical composition of them, lots of water. The vapor you see here is what, oh, uh, tourist is passing here. Anyway, uh, so we have another person passing. Oh yeah, that's nice, actually give a good contrast. Anyway, uh, so the water exists and not in the form of the liquid water as we know on the surface of the earth, it's in the crystalline structure of the rocks and sediments that uh, form the thick continental crust. When we say thick, it means up to 50, 70 kilometers thickness. And uh, they, because they are, they're practically uh, buoyant slightly, they will come back later. They will not melt completely. And uh, there is no melting actually in the deep in the crust, uh, mantle. M melting in that depth is impossible. Uh, because it's under pressure. When there is pressure, nothing melts in that sense. When the pressure is removed, like this one, extension of the, the mid-Atlantic ridge, the pressure is removed, the things start to boil up and you can see the eruption like this happening. It's practically a splitting of the ocean crust, which is now surfaced, is resurfaced. Uh, it's surfaced at the, you know, at this, uh, above the ocean. Example, good example of it is the Afar, triangle in the Djibouti and the Ethiopia and Eritrea. We have uh, other examples. This is example, another example of it. Of course, it's a hot spot. Uh, but again, you see the crust being formed. A continent, practically, in the form of Iceland is growing by this volcanism. It's a core of a continent, future continent. If you want to know how in the path of, past of the Earth, the crust of the Earth shaped in the Hadrian times, birth of the solar system we are talking about, Look at the Iceland, you can see that the whole volcanism creates land masses. Land masses gradually grow and over millions of years, of course, this may be a new continent. Imagine that. Long after all of us are gone. 